It's Black History Month, and today the source welcomes a man who's seen it all for 91 plus years, Niagara Falls Arts and Culture Wall of Fame member, Big John T-Bone Little joins us. Welcome, Big John, it's great to see you again. <laughs> Thank you, sir. 91 years old, you have truly seen it all. Let's go back to those early days. I, I, I hear you were six years old at the BME Church in Niagara Falls when you took up the drums. Yes, How yes. did that come about? <laughs> Well, my Aunt Norval Johnson used to play the piano and the thing there. So she told me one day, my father played was a drummer and he played guitar, but he, he, I, I got me a little set of drums. Somebody left them on the, for Christmas for two of them. So I remember a little, little snare and all that kind of stuff. So my dad said, well, why don't you learn to play it? So he shot, taught me how to play. So I got talking to my aunt. My aunt said, well, why don't you come in some Sunday and play with me? She says, play in a church. I said, okay, uh, you know, so I'm you know, a kid, but sick, you know. And then when I walk in the church, the church is packed. And I said, I told my father, I said, no, I'm not going to play. He said, yes, you are. You gave your word you're going to play. I said, no, I'm not, Dad. He said, come on, I want to talk to you. <laughs> he talked me. And he, he beat my little butt boy. And, you know, I, and I was mad. I woke him. You know, I said, okay, I'm going to play. I'm mad. I'm sitting behind the drums. And tears running down my eyes. I'm looking at everybody mean. And I'm playing. Dum, 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 dum. So we played two songs. And then after we finished playing, everybody standing and gave us an ovation. And I was hooked. After that, I said, wow, Dad, that's pretty good. You were right, you know? And that's how, that's how I got started. Yeah. You, you traveled with some of the biggest names, traveled all through, the, uh, through North America. Yeah. Did you experience a lot of racism in the Deep South? <laughs> I got to tell you this, please. We're down in Louisville, Kentucky, and I had a hit record there. It was called uh, Rockin' Crickets. So it was really big, and then the other side was shaking and stomping. So it was big. everybody loved it, so we get into town. And so... We couldn't stay in a hotel together because we were two, we were mixed race. Eh? The sax player was black, I was black, and they had to get the guitar player and the drummer white. And they all come, we all grew up together, what do we do, do all that stuff. So we're playing there. And so we tried to get the hotel, and no, 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 so we had to stay in a black hotel. So we all stayed in a black hotel. So we get down there, so we get, we check in there, so the guy said, well, let's go to the grocery store and buy some groceries. So I said, okay. So I went, went, went you know, buy the eggs, the ham bologna, you know, bacon, stuff like that. I get to the counter, and she says, you can't buy those eggs. I said, why? She says, those are white eggs. I said, what, 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 you know, what's the difference? She says, because you can't, you can't, just can't buy white eggs. And I thought, I was going to, you know, be, be real hostile. And I said, wait a minute, I'm down south. I got to be cool. I said, okay, ma'am, I'll take them. No, no, she says, I'll take them back. She says, so she went back and got me some brown eggs. <laughs> I never forgot. So even the eggs were segregated in the yeah, store. Yeah, the eggs. And they just, we're in, we're, in, we're in a restaurant, and you see water coming out of the wall. And one side's black and one side's white. white. I said, how does that look at me? I said, how does that look You know, they must have two pipes. Then they had one pipe come up, and it split. And that side was white, this was black. So when crazy. did you start seeing things change? I, you traveled all through the 50s, the 60s, into the 70s. Yeah. When did you see things changing for black people? Well, I think it started to change when, when uh, Martin Luther King started to come up doing something. But it was still rough, you know. They, were, they, were, they, had, they had riots and all kind of stuff. And it, was just, it was just, I couldn't understand, you know. And when we come back, we, we, well, when I got to the South, I said, that's it. I ain't going back again. I never did one back again. And I had Conway Twitty, one. He was a good friend of mine. We played together in St. Catharines. He said, John, come to me. Come with me. I'll make you a millionaire. I, I said, what are you going to do? He said, we'll go back down to Tennessee. He says, we'll be doing the, the Grand Ole Opry. I said, no, Conway, no, no, no. He said, nah, man, I just had a little baby son. So I said, no, no. I went through it once. I said, no. But he said, I'll make you a millionaire. You won't have to worry about it. No. What did it feel like to be in, enshrined into the Niagara Falls Arts and Culture Oh, that was thing? great. That was great. I never had any special. Uh, Mayor D. Diodotti. And uh, so he, we became fast friends. So I gave him a hat like this. I says, <laughs> I says, I says ladies and gentlemen, there's a new sheriff in town. They put the white hat in his head. He cracked up and we became fast friends. But... Uh, and he was one of the guys, the instigators that got, got me into the Hall of Fame. And There's a documentary out about you yeah, as well. I yeah. think it's called um, oh, the Made guy in from, Niagara. A guy from, a guy from Niagara, yeah. So tell me about that. Tell me about that process and well, what it was like. This guy from uh, Africa. Um, His first working, name is A.O.? Yeah, he was working at the, at the museum. 
And you know, somehow he got to my, my name. And he, after he found I was in the Hall of Fame, then he, he started checking up on me and stuff. Come over to the house and brought his cameras and all this kind of stuff. So they started taking pictures of everything else. And so they come in the house and I, so they said, he said, well, show me all your, your costumes. So she hung them all up on the wall like that. He took pictures of them. And then we had different And he also looked at your 100 guitars? Yes, huge yes. Huge collection. Plus they were all there too. And they did some, well, some any, I don't know, some little things I did, I don't know. Little things I didn't know. Big John, with 75 years of your life spent earning your living playing music, you've played with a lot of big names, but more importantly, you've mentored a lot of younger musicians. What has that been like? I always try to help. If it, like, say, if I see like uh, uh, musicians, say some guys are playing, and they're, uh, one, they're sitting with and playing with me like that, and they, want, they ask me questions, how, you know, why, why is it, uh, how come I don't uh, uh, get that same feel? I said, because, first of all, you got to play from your heart, as you got your mind thing, but your heart is it controls it. As you play it, as you express it, you don't rush. You take your time, and you. A lot of guys I've taught them. I was saying, boy, they're they're good guitar players, or good musicians now, or good singers. You know, just just, just little things I told them. But I don't care if they're white, black, red, or anything. You know, if I can help them, I'm going to help them. You know. I met you a few years ago at an event at the BME Church in Niagara Falls, which was important in your musical upbringing. Yeah. You're still involved in that church to, oh, a, yeah. to a great degree. Yeah. It's a really central part of your yeah. life. That's, that's where I grew up. My grandmother was there, my grandfathers, and all my uncles and aunts, cousins went to that church. And then, then, I, then I come along and like that. And it was just, it, it, it's, it's just, it gives you, it gives me a warm peace. You know, when I walk in there, it's just like I'm home. You know, and uh, and I like I like playing hymns and I like write hymns and I sing like sing. And I, I I'm very religious, and I believe nobody's ever changed make me change my my faith because I've had too many things happen. Nobody would tell me God is not good. Even with all this COVID going on, uh, He's still in control. You watch. Big John, you brought one of your 100 guitars with you today. Can we ask you to play us out to the end of this interview? Oh, sure, sure. Be glad to. That was great. Yeah, I remember that.